Live from the Javits Center in New York City, it's The Cube. Covering Inforum 2017. Brought to you by Infor. Welcome back to Inforum 2017. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We're joined by Mark Scabelli. He is the Chief Creative Officer here at Infor. Thanks so much for returning to theCUBE. Well, thanks for having me again. It's good to see you guys. See you. So last year, the big announcement was H&L Digital, Hook and Loop Digital. Bring us up to speed. Give us a status update of where you are now. Well, we're a year later. Um, I think what's really important is that we've established our application development framework, which allows us to rapidly deploy our prototypes, lap rapidly deploy uh, the project we're working on for a lot of customers. Um, we've had a lot of wins over the last year. Um, we're working closely with um, Brooklyn Sports, uh, both the basketball team and the, uh, the stadium and the entertainment center, uh, working with Travis Perkins. Uh, we're working with American Express, so we've got a lot of great client wins in our belt. We've learned a lot over the last year, but most importantly, we've, we've been able to actually fine-tune our application development framework to be able to bring that stuff to market very quickly for our customers, which has been a very big deal for us. So you mentioned a couple of client wins, sure. Brooklyn Sports. Let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Tell me a little about, tell our viewers specifically what's gone on. Yeah, so, um, Brooklyn Nets, uh, basketball team here in the U.S., right? So. Uh, player performance a little bit down, so we're working with the performance coaches, we're working with the telemetric data that's coming off of the players, um, things uh, as it pertains to the, um, the arc of the ball throw or the skeletal models of how they perform or how much sleep they're getting. We're tying into a lot of IoT devices that the players use. We're bringing all of that data into one place for the performance coaches and then allowing them to make better decisions on the, on the field, uh, on the court, uh, in real time. So you'll see actually uh, behind you guys is our half court. We've actually set up a half court to show some of that data that we're bringing in about player performance. We actually run an NBA player assessment and show your player readiness. I hit like an 8% readiness for <laughs> <laughs> There's still time, yeah. there's still time. Five, eight, I didn't think I was really going to get very far in the NBA. High single digits. Yeah, high, yeah, high, yeah, real high. Uh, single digits, yeah. So, um, so we're working a lot around player performance, uh, certainly, and then also as well uh, with Brooklyn Sports Entertainment um, around the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. Uh, how they can start to brand that, that experience. Nobody really has an affinity for an arena, right? You go and see Beyonce or you go to watch the Nets, you don't really think about going to the Barclays Center. So how do you start, as soon as they walk in the door, engaging with a customer, using technology to drive all this value all the way through? How do you find the shortest beverage uh, in, uh, you know bar line? How do you find the cleanest bathroom? How do you find uh, to get you know, beverage and drinks and food delivered to your seat? Well, that's all going to be technology that's going to drive that. So. Uh, like a lot of our clients, we've, we've installed the digital um, backbone, the underpinnings of that with our cloud suite, and now it's our job to come in and start creating these apps that differentiate them in the marketplace, help Barclays compete against other, um, other next-gen stadiums. So the Nets example, it's, not, it's, it's similar to Moneyball, but different. Mm -hmm. So you're talking to Arc of the Ball, and, 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 and so the remediation of some of those, or the, the optimization of some of those is just uh, uh, different training patterns or you know, di different you know, exercises or, or, or drills that they can do. Whereas in Moneyball, it's, it's like this unseen value, you know, on base percentage, for example. But are, are there analogs to, yeah, to Moneyball? Like, like I was listening to an interview with an, uh, an owner the other day, and the, and the interviewer was beating him up about one player, and he said, well, if you look at the deeper analytics, <laughs> I'm like, oh, deeper analytics, what does that mean? So are there deeper analytics that Absolutely. you can, you can Yeah, you know, we've left a lot of the basketball to the basketball professionals. You know, when we started this thing, the GM said to us, you know, should we really, you know, get this started with you guys? What do you know about basketball? And we, we looked around, there's like an Englishman next to me, and myself, and we're like, we don't know a lot about basketball. <laughs> um, but we hope that that's what you're bringing to the table. We know a lot about how to bring uh, you know, the data science together, we can bring the AI in, we can bring all that together for your performance coaches and work with them, just like we don't know a lot about farming and agriculture, but we can work with feed um, companies to help them optimize for their customers. So it's not about like, what we know about basketball, but to your point, those performance coaches are definitely finding those, those little nuggets of data to help those teams perform better. Um, I couldn't tell you one off the top of my head because that's how little I know about basketball, my, my 8%, Performance running will show you that, but they are they are looking inside that data and able to find that. And the, the trick is bringing it to them in real time, bringing it so that they don't have to go into deep Excel documents. That's what they were doing before. It was all stored in Excel, and they'd go through and they maybe somebody would make a pivot table or something. And they were watching play tapes. They're it? watching play tapes, absolutely, yeah. of course. And um, by being able to assess all that data too, as well, and bring that into the feed and be able to to actually assess that and report it back into the, the larger system we're providing, 
it gives them a lot, a lot more visibility so they can find those little nuggets that they know as basketball professionals. And Burst is part of this solution? Uh, not currently, no, oh, okay. but certainly we'll, we will be needing to put Burst into that, that play, yeah. So Thomas Perkins is another example. Travis you, Perkins, yeah. Travis Perkins, I'm sorry, that you That's mentioned. Um, what, what kinds of things are you doing there to make that company yeah. able to, to really use data more yeah. wisely. So Travis Perkins, you know, one of the largest uh, building manufacturing uh, supply company in the UK, uh, over 2,000 distribution locations uh, across England. Um, very strong in its footprint. It's a really strong brand in terms of, of a uh, sort of the Home Depot of, of the UK. Um, they put in uh, M3 last year. It was a big announcement, and it was a very large initiative for them. That's the digital backbone we talk about, right? So now it's our job. We're coming in now, and we're automating a lot of their systems for their um, distribution centers, so they get a better customer experience. So when I go into a Travis Perkins distribution center, I can get what I need much quicker. So that's kind of the baseline thing that we come in and do. We we look at ways to optimize for, um, for example, if I could fob in with my truck and actually just pull my truck, fob in, you know it's me. My order's ready. I don't even get out of the truck. They pack my truck, and I just drive out the other side. How do we create that? Um, how do we create uh, uh, engagements for visibility models for the um, distribution uh, managers to be able to see what's selling, what's not selling, who's performing, who's not performing? So those are things that we do at the baseline of the experience. And then additionally to that is we look at new business models with them. So we're actually helping them think about new ways that they can create subscription models or ecosystem models. So for example, working on, um, they're working on uh, the tool locker rental, setting up a basically locker or a rental facility and then using software to be able to access that locker and then you, create, you sort of create a subscription model to that. I'm able to just pull up, punch in a code, that's my tool locker, I can get my tools right out of it, and I can drive right off. So, um, and then doing it in places geographically that make a lot of sense for them. So that's kind of the, the best side of it. I think we get these signature experiences that optimize on top of the backbone, but then we create these whole new um, business transformation models uh, for these companies. Um, that, that's, that's really exciting, really helpful. So retail is an interesting example. Everybody's got an Amazon war room mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to, how to compete, where they can add value. What have you seen specifically in, in the retail business? Yeah, I just uh, moderated a panel with um, the CIO of DSW and the COO of Crate and Barrel on, on either side of me, and it was exciting to see that they're, you know, they're, they feel the disruption, but they're certainly um, eager to, 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 take, to take it over. So in, on the Crate and Barrel side, we're seeing them be really beat up by the wayfarers of the, of the of the world. You know, three billion dollar valuation. They can they can get to market much quicker. They're they're running products in a much different way. Where Crate and Barrel has a much longer lead time around um, the CPQ model, right? They've got to configure it, price it, quote it, get it out. It takes 12 weeks to get a couch. How do you get on the supply chain side? How do you get that shorter? So they're working with Infor to get that supply chain shorter, so they can compete on a lot shorter lead times. But what we're coming in to help them do is also look at how can you start to create experiences while you're waiting for that that couch to be produced, or while you're um, shopping uh, online. What are, what are the things I can do to know how long it'll take to get that item? And now do we just take all that digital backbone of that supply chain and and create new experiences for it? On the DSW side, we've been working really closely with them on point of sale, um, as well as uh, deep customer experience uh, apps for them uh, with their employees. Um, they really see their employees as the, the key tool to driving um, uh, loyalty to their stores, so we've been working on brand new apps in the mobile space that will help their employees um, be able to serve their customers a lot better, have a much more um, tied loyalty program to um, their job performance with the customer's loyalty, so a lot of great things there that they're working hard on. Um, but certainly it's, it's, a, it's a massive behemoth to compete against Amazon as a retailer, certainly. So, what was, so what's your advice then for a company that is, I mean you're talking about companies that are already being very thoughtful and planful yeah. about this transformation and, and understanding first of all that they need to transform, that they, they need to change or else they'll be left behind. But So what's your advice for companies that are just starting on it? I think you know, we got to look at this as a holistic approach, right? We cannot take a, 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 a little nibble bite size out of the problem, right? So when it comes to digital, looking at the entire ecosystem, looking at the operations, looking at the customer, looking at the employee, saying what are we doing on our core backbone of the operations to make that run efficiently, to automate that. Let's do that, let's get that out of the way of all those people, let's make that run as quickly and as streamlined as possible. Our cloud suites certainly help companies do that. And then let's look um, at how we can start to, to transform the way they do their, their they, they function inside their business by creating these functionally integrated models between all three, between the operations, the customer, and the employee. And let's create new experiences that live on top of that backbone that drive new value. And until you do that, until you leverage your, 
your brand, like Crate and Barrel can leverage their brand if they just shorten that supply chain and start to optimize for how they deliver. Um, DSW can leverage their brand as a shoe warehouse if they, order, if they provide a larger assortment and a better experience in store, they can compete against Amazon. So to do that, we need them to, we need, I would recommend companies to think of, them, think of the approach holistically and not as uh, small little bites of just let's create this app and this one app is going to solve our problems. It's not, you've got this much larger holistic approach you need to take. Yeah. What percent of the Infor portfolio has hook and loop touched, yeah. affected? So hook and loop core, certainly um, the GA products, they've touched everything. You'll see uh, tomorrow on stage, uh, Nunzi Esposito, our new uh, head of hook and loop core, who's running the business that when I first met you, I was running, right? The, they're, um, they're, they're doing very well, and they've touched, I would say, percentage-wise, 80% um, of the product, if not more. Um, certainly the products that are driving our business, like EAM, HCM, financials, they have reinvented. Uh, and you'll see it tomorrow, they've done some incredible work. They just, they'll be releasing tomorrow, um, it's pretty exciting, a new, uh, uh, UX for our entire cloud suite. Um, so that's pretty incredible, right? How, how Coleman will be integrated into our cloud suite's a big deal, so how do you create a UX for that? And then certainly, of course, how much UX and UI do you take away because you introduced Coleman? You could take a lot of UX and UI away. A lot of functionality gets stripped away. So um, it's changed the methodologies we've used in the Hook and Loop core team, but uh, Nunzio has uh, done a great job challenging himself to do that. I know, Rebecca, you were saying when you read the press releases around Infor, like they use terms like, you know, beautiful, and you know, not, you don't ever see it, so it's very Apple-esque. Where do you get your inspiration? Uh, I think it's the consumer grade products. We talked about years ago when I first met you, you know, the, uh, the idea that how I, I function my daily life at home should echo how I, how I function at work. Um, certainly now we're getting inspiration for how companies that are born digitally creating these models that, that drive them, how we can help other companies do that as well. So we're inspired by everything that touches us. Um, you know, f I, to be honest with you, I still use my TiVo. I still use, I might be the only person <laughs> left. That's I not like true, the they're, doing well. yeah. <laughs> they're doing very well. I like the little They're doing very well, so I, you know, I can't yeah. say I'm the only person, but I, I'm probably the person that will admit it that I love my TiVo. But these are things I've watched them not just change their UX, like we did um, within four or five years ago, but now they've changed their business model. they changed what they've become as a hub and as a, as a digital solution. Um, how they um, use media channels to drive their business. Um, I think that's incredible. It's a similar journey we're going on, so there's, there's a lot to be inspired by. And why should the consumer guys have all the fun? Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Certainly. Yeah. So how do you keep your team, you're the chief creative officer, so yeah. how do you, you talked about what inspires you and what inspires the company as a whole, but how do you, how do you keep a culture of creativity and innovation going? How do you yeah. keep that momentum? Um, you know, we've been really fortunate to have a really great um, support system by the executive team. Uh, Charles Phillips, Duncan Angove, certainly, I mean, have been incredible about um, needing uh, a team like Hook and Loop. Like, you know, when I met David, it was 15 people, maybe a little more, mm -hmm. and now it's 120 that run that core team. When we, when we launched h &L Digital last year, we were like nine people, and now, you know, we're over 40. Um, that investment, those dollars they put back into those, the, these kinds of endeavors are really indicative of that. And, and I think that, that it comes through to the creatives and the other people that we bring in that this is the kind of investment that Infor is interested in. Um, we have a beautiful working environment inside New York City, inside our headquarters. Uh, we have a beautiful new garage. We just opened up an innovation lab. We get to play with the greatest toys. Um, I think we're actually very, very fortunate to be inside a company like Infor um, and, and get to work with the people we get to work with um, as designers and as creatives. And that was an up, you know, uphill slope to keep people motivated to do that as creatives, and we call them left brain creatives, certainly. But I think we're there now. I think um, we've, we, we turn away a lot of people to come work for us now. In so New York, London, Dubai, right? That's now? exactly right, yeah, so. thank you, yeah. We are, we opened, uh, we opened London uh, just, just recently, we're opening Dubai next, and, uh, and then we have two, two teams in New York, yeah. It's pretty exciting. Great. Love to see the Dubai. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, Dubai's, Dubai's um, <laughs> being built up right now. We Maybe have an office the next, there already, but. Next destination yeah. Cube for Dubai. The <laughs> we should do a Cube Dubai, that'd be great. Yeah. They would love it there. Yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> I love it. Well, Mark. Put that on the list. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thank it's always you, a pleasure Thank having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. We will have more from Inforum after this.